So let's go back through these examples and fix all the problems we saw, all those crashes, by using manual allocation. And manual allocation is done through the use of two library functions, which are pretty scary. And they are called malloc and free. And in a sense, free is the inverse of malloc. Malloc stands for, I guess, memory allocate. And the idea is you can call the malloc function to manually allocate storage for whatever you want, any type you want. The problem is when you allocate that storage, you are taking full responsibility for it. It doesn't get automatically destroyed like the variables we've been creating so far in the course. You have to destroy it when you're done with it. It gives you complete freedom to use the space as you wish, but in exchange you take complete responsibility over the space. When you're done with the variables you create using malloc, you have to call free to recycle that storage. And if you don't, nobody else will be able to use it. It'll be gone until you call free. So if you take the book out of the library, you have to return it or nobody else can use it. And over time, that can lead to real problems inside a computer system. If your program is running for a long time and it keeps taking out memory and it never returns it, eventually there won't be any more memory available, um, which of course, as you can expect, is a pretty big problem. So uh, let's see. Uh, here we have this huge struct, which I've already demonstrated in the previous video, we can't create. It's too big. The compiler can't make it for us. Uh, and so we can't create a variable by the usual logic, this big struct called C, because the compiler simply can't put something that big inside the scope of your function. So what are we to do? Well, we can manually allocate ourselves some storage. When we use malloc to, to allocate memory for ourselves, malloc gives us space outside of any scope. And in fact, as a result, we can't use malloc to create a variable directly. All we can do is use malloc to create some storage and then create a pointer to it. So I'm going to change my variable to be called C, I'll call it CPTR. So here, I'm going to now have a pointer to an object of this type. But if I have to work with pointers, that's certainly better than not being able to create these objects at all. So I'm going to call my function malloc. And malloc takes one argument, which is how much space do you need? Because malloc knows nothing about what you're going to use the space for. Instead, it just says, if you want some space, here it is. But you have to tell me how much you want. So what I need to know is, how big is the object I'm creating? I want to create an object of type customer data. I need to know how big that is. And you know, lucky for us, we actually have an operator that can help us with that. We can use the size of operator. Size of customer data. That is how big uh, the object I want to create is. So I'll call malloc, give it the size I want, which is just a number, the number of bytes that are needed by this object. And malloc will do the following. So here in f, I've called a function, and I want to take its return value. The, the um, variable I'm using is called c pointer, and it's of type customer data star. Here's what malloc does. Somewhere out there in the wilderness, malloc creates a maybe amorphous blob of storage. And there it is. It's brand new. It gets created right at the moment that you call malloc. Notice how it's outside of the scope of any function. And then, and then it creates enough storage to store whatever you asked for. So I said, give me enough space to store a customer data object. And then it sends you back a pointer to that storage. So because it's here outside the scope of any function, it's up to you to make sure you return it when you're done. Because when the function ends, the pointer gets destroyed, but the thing that it points to doesn't. And that means it's up to you to make sure that you dispose of that pointer, that you take this object and you deallocate it before you're done. Because if the function gets destroyed before you do that, then nobody will ever be able to access this memory again. And it'll be lost. We call that a memory leak. So I've called malloc. Let's try this. We saw in the previous video that if I try compiling and running this in its previous form, the program would crash. Uh, here, it still complains I'm not actually using the space. I'll demonstrate that in my next example. Uh, but I am allowed to do this. I can now create an object of this type. I have to make sure I only use it through this pointer, but I can finally create an object of the type that I want, um, which I wasn't allowed to do before. Okay, let's take a look at this example. And of course, I need to talk about what happens when we're done with our storage. How do we deallocate it? And I will show that off in this example here. So as a refresher, let's try compiling and running this the way it currently looks. 
and it crashes. We can't allocate an array this big if we use the automatic allocation that we're used to. So what do I do? Well, I can observe that if I, if I draw a quick diagram in my function f, first off, um, when I'm using the array, I know that you know using subscripts, using square brackets is no different than using a pointer. So what I could do is I could say, how about we try this? I want to have a variable a, but I actually don't care if it's a real array inside the function. Why not just make it an int star and make a pointer to uh, you know, an array that exists somewhere outside in the wilderness. If only there were a way of suddenly and spontaneously creating a brand new array out in the wilderness somewhere. Well, it's our lucky day. It turns out that there is. I can use malloc for this as well. So what malloc will do is give me some space. It'll give me a pointer to a new block of space that it allocates for me somewhere out there in the wilderness. So I'll call malloc. And then the question is, how much space do I want? Well, here's the size of my array. It's the number n, which is 10 million, but we'll use the number n. I want enough space for n integers. Okay, so I want n times the amount of space for one integer. n times the size of a single int. That's how big the array is supposed to be. Remember that if I make an array of 10 ints, the, the size of that in memory isn't just 10. It's, it's actually 40 if an int has size 4, because an int, a single int, might occupy more than one byte of space. And of course, remember, just like in my size of video, you don't get tested on you know, how many bytes are an int. If you ever need to know how many bytes are in an int, use the size of operator. So here, I'm calling malloc to make an array of n ints, and it's allocated by me manually. And it gets created out here in the, in the wilderness outside of any scope. And I just get a pointer back to it. Okay, and then I can just use that pointer like I would use any other pointer into an array. So I can say a sub i, so uh, you know, if I look at a sub 2 or something, follow the pointer a, walk ahead by two steps. No different than all the other pointers we've been working with in arrays. And then down here on line 24, I can access the array to compute whatever weird arbitrary result that I want, and I can print it out. But then we have this problem. If I do this the way that I'm describing, where the storage gets allocated manually outside of the function, then when the function ends, this happens. The scope gets destroyed. But wait, there's that array still sitting out there in the wilderness. It doesn't get destroyed automatically because it's not inside the scope of the function. Even worse, nobody has a pointer to it anymore. The only pointer I had, the last thing tethering this thing to shore, was that pointer I was keeping inside of f. So let's just redraw the scope for f. I had this pointer called a. And if f is allowed to end, then the pointer a gets destroyed. And then nobody has a pointer to this array. That's no good, because all of that storage used for that array can never be accessed again if you don't have a pointer to it. And you can't recycle it for other use, because I've never told the uh, runtime system, I've never told the machine that I'm done with it. I said, give me some space for an array, and then I just sort of forgot about it. That is a memory leak. I need to make sure when I'm done with my storage that I tell the computer that I'm done with it. And to do that, I call the function free. So free is to say, here's some memory I allocated myself earlier. I am now done with it. And in general, the rule is any pointer you get back from malloc must eventually be passed into free. Notice how I pass the exact same thing I got back from malloc directly into free. If you don't allocate the array with malloc, you do not call free. But if you allocate anything with malloc, you must at some point point in the future call the free function to dispose of the storage. Now conversely, as soon as you call the free function, you should assume that the storage ceases to exist. It's gone. And therefore, once you call the free function, you should never use that storage again. OK, so let's try running this. Uh, and just to be clear, like opening and closing files, calling malloc and not having a corresponding call to free is considered an error. It's a serious error. It doesn't, it doesn't, it's not as obvious in a course like this why it's so serious. But in, in subsequent courses, if you work with manual allocation, it'll become pretty clear why. Uh, so we'll try compiling and running this again. And here it runs. I'm able to call the function f. And um, yeah, I get here's before loop, here's after loop. Then I'm able to compute this you know, arbitrary result by uh, adding together two elements. And then finally, I get all the way back down into main and the program ends. It doesn't crash because by allocating manually, I can work around the internal limit on the size that I, of the storage that I allocate. Okay, next problem. Returning arrays. 
Okay, so we saw in an earlier video that we can't do this. We can't make an array in the scope of a function and then return it because the array's storage is scoped inside the function. So I'll, re I'll sketch out that diagram again. So there's my function make an array, and here's my function main. And in main, I make this pointer called arr, and it's an int star. And the problem is, as this code is currently constructed, as we saw in a previous video, I make an array inside the scope of the function, which means if I return a pointer to this, and then the function ends, all of this gets destroyed, and it becomes invalid. And of course, we can revisit that that means that the program crashes if I try to run it. I can't use this array uh, because it no longer exists by the time main gets that pointer to it. And there it is. Uh, oh, that's, that's nice. It didn't crash. It gave weird, arbitrary, random results. You might see that the values I put inside the array are 6, 10, 17, 187, 111. And now it comes out with just weird garbage. And I think that that might be a function of changing this to a pointer. But in any case, clearly, this is not what I intended to return. And so it's the usual problem of undefined memory. In a previous video a few weeks ago, you saw that if you wander into memory that's not supposed to exist, you can get weird arbitrary results. So what I want is to be able to legitimately create an array inside a function and then return it for use in main. So what do I do? Well, of course, the problem I have to work around is I can't have the array's storage be scoped inside the function. I need to avoid this problem. So what do I do? Well, I think, you know, malloc can probably help me with that too. Why don't we, instead of creating the physical array in the function, let's create a pointer. And then somewhere out here in the wilderness, it doesn't need to be that big, somewhere out here in the wilderness, I will have malloc create for me space for an array. And then what I'll get is a pointer to the beginning of this. And because this is out in the wilderness, it will not get destroyed automatically when my function ends. Of course, that means I have to take responsibility for destroying it when I'm done, but I suppose that's something I have to do if the alternative is the program not working, if the, if the program's going to crash or give me weird random behavior. So here, instead of allocating the array the usual way, I will allocate it as a pointer. I'll call malloc, um, scroll that up gingerly there, okay. Call malloc, how many elements do I want? I want five times the size of a single int. That's how much space I want. All right, and then I will fill the array up with data. I'll even do this thing I mentioned in a previous video where I create a pointer and I set it equal to A. So what I'll end up with conceptually is this situation, okay. Uh, and then uh, I guess I'll fill the array with data like I said I was going to. And then the function will return the value of A. Well, what's the value of A? Well, it's this arrow, okay. So main gets this arrow. The function gets, the function now ends Okay, so we get this happening. And like before, obviously the scope of the function gets destroyed, and so do all these pointers that emanate from the function. But notice that the storage the function created with malloc survives. It's not inside the scope of the function, and therefore it continues to exist when the function ends, because it is being allocated manually. I am responsible for freeing that space when I'm done. Okay, so let's try running it as, it as it is right now. There's a major mistake in this code, but we'll try running it as it is right now. And notice that when I run the code, the code doesn't crash. Main, we, we end up at the end of main like we expect, and I'm able to print out all of the elements of that array. The function creates an array, the array continues to exist when the function is over, and main is then able to use the array. Well, great, so what's the problem? Well, the problem is I never said when this storage could be recycled. I created this, I allocated this space with malloc, but then when I was done with it, I didn't free it. That's significant. Obviously, when the function ended, I didn't want to free the space. I wanted the space to continue existing after the function ended. And main still has the ability to work with this storage. But when main is done with it, as soon as we are going to lose the very last pointer, to this storage, we have to make sure we call the free function to destroy that. So at this line here on line 36, when I call the free function, what I'm saying is here's a pointer I previously got back from malloc. Maybe that was in a different function, who cares? Here is something malloc once gave me. I'm done with it. And so this gets destroyed and we can no longer use it. And now the memory can be recycled for, the, for use by other functions or other programs. 
And of course, if I try and then use this pointer again after I've freed the space, undefined behavior will occur. Something bad will happen. So of course, it's often a good idea when you use the free function to then afterwards, as sort of a note to yourself, set the pointer you use to null to make sure you don't accidentally try and use it again. Because if you set the pointer to null and you try and use it, then you, the program will crash, guaranteed. And that means that uh, it's easy to you know check if you get a crash, whether it's because you've used a null pointer. So now the pointer points to null. So what we've talked about in this video is the ability to take over from the compiler and handle allocation yourself, but in return take responsibility for deallocating that storage. If you call malloc, you must eventually call free to make sure that that memory is returned to the pool of memory and can be reused. If you don't, if you take out books from the library and don't return them, eventually the library will become empty and nobody will be able to use it. And that's that's not a good idea. Um, inside of a computer, if we leak memory, if we keep allocating memory and forget to free it, eventually nobody will be able to get any more memory anymore and the system will sort of grind to a halt. And the operating system has a way of, you know, maybe stepping in and helping in that situation, but certainly your program is doomed if it creates so many memory leaks that it can no longer allocate memory.